In the domain of Sol during the Age of Myth, seven impoverished dwarves embarked on an ambitious journey to establish one of the most beautiful and profitable fortresses the world has ever seen. Their plan, construct two large towers on opposite sides of a brook that would lead to the most breathtaking waterfall in the land. Will the dwarves find success in this strange new world, or will they wind up dead at the bottom of the great waterfall? Yeah, no. Fuck this waterfall, bro. Welcome to Lemulkadol, Gold Gems. Are dwarves a miner, woodcutter, mason, stonecrafter, wisher dwarf? Wish dwarf. Fucking god damn it, dude, these names are so hard. Fisher dwarf and planter have traveled far in search for adventure and riches. Led by the expedition leader Dishmab Hamepieces, they've decided to settle at the top of a mountain next to a large waterfall. Taking a closer look at the expedition leader, Dishmab is a 58 year old dwarven male who avoids fights, has good intuition, poor social awareness, prone to discord, good with language, and not very creative. Hopefully his good intuition will lead the dwarves to fame and riches. With that out of the way, the dwarves begin excavating a large stairwell, which will lead deep into the mountain. As our miner begins tunneling, some of the other dwarves begin chopping trees and clearing the area at the surface for our eventual tower. With the entrance completed, our dwarven miner gets to work creating a meeting area at the bottom of the staircase. Two additional rooms are also carved out by the miner, one being a dormitory for the current band of dwarves and the second a stockpile for supplies. After zoning off the stockpile room, it's time to create this world's equivalency of a dwarven sweatshop. Because in gold gems, it doesn't matter if you're a dwarven child or a full grown adult, those productivity quotas ain't gonna get met without some dwarven stank. Construction began moving quickly as an expansion to the supply room was made. Some workshops for the sweatshop were installed, which would be used to create wonderful crafts from the raw materials in this mountain, as well as a kitchen area for the dwarves to prepare fancy meals. All was starting to come together in gold gems. Our dwarves were becoming self-sustaining with their own farm and guard dogs. Now comes the next phase for the fortress. As the famous proverb goes, you can't have shit in Detroit. And in Gold Gems, we want to mitigate that as much as possible. In order for our fortress to become stronger and increase our property value, we would need to attract migrants from across the land to want to settle here. Now, not to get political, but I really don't care where these migrants come from. They could be pointed-eared elves, green-skinned goblins, or just punkish humans. As long as they spread the good word of Gold Gems, I'm cool with them living in the fortress. For us to attract more migrants, we'll want to get started on a couple of different projects. First being the Fortress's Tavern. Ah, the Tavern. An establishment where one minute you could be sharing stories and listening to music with the boys, and in the next, some kid is kicking your teeth in and breaking your windpipe with their toy mallet. But regardless, a tavern would be needed if we'd want to attract more migrants, and a tavern we would build. Starting off with a kitchen and two stills to create dwarven wine from our plump helmets. The dwarves also began making barrels to store the alcoholic beverages once fermentation was completed. Lastly, we'd need to smooth the floors and walls to make the dwarves happy and increase the likelihood of a high income earner to want to visit and become a citizen of gold gems. This would also help to keep the undesirables away. Before long, our band of seven dwarves grew to twelve. Little did I know something terrible was occurring at the bottom of our waterfall something that would doom the fate of all 12 dwarves that settled in gold gems. It began with one dwarven child, and soon after, our stone crafter too. It looks like they took a tumble down the waterfall and landed at the bottom, their poor little legs shattered and unable to move. The force of the water just beating down on them continuously, it looked like none of the other dwarves would dare help the two stranded at the bottom. Whether it was from fear or pure fucking cowardice, those dwarves, <laughs> those two, oh my god, those two dwarves continued to be pelted by the force of the waterfall. Before long, another dwarf, a miner, would be seen tumbling down the waterfall and landing with the others. I really couldn't believe what I was saying. The fuck is going on here? Then another, our cook. Four dwarves all fell down the waterfall and broke their bodies on the landing. At first I thought this waterfall was beautiful and scenic, but now it's littered with broken dwarves and children. 
I attempted to create a squad with the victims of the waterfall and command them to move, but they remained at the bottom, unable to move or help themselves. I thought, well, if this waterfall would be the biggest threat these dwarves would face for now, we should be alright. But like an abusive lover, Dwarf Fortress doesn't stop at just one beating. They just keep coming and coming, and the next beating these dwarves would face would be their last. Some time has passed and our dwarves number at 19. With more and more migrants coming each season, it looks like our luck is finally turning around. The dwarves that fell down the waterfall froze to death in the winter, except for one, the dwarven child, the first to fall in. Feeling sorry for the loss of the other dwarves, I ordered the construction of splints and crutches for the injured child. A hospital was also built, and a chief medical dwarf was appointed as the only government-subsidized healthcare option for these dwarves. Above ground, the beginnings of our tower were laid out with stairs, hatches, and walls on four sides. But suddenly, a commotion could be seen outside the tower walls. It looked like the dwarven child had escaped from the waterfall, but something was wrong. Before I could even realize that she had made it out somehow, she was killed by the town fisher dwarf. Taking a look at the combat log, it appears that the child was so royally pissed off from being left at the bottom of the waterfall that she decided to take her anger out on a stray cavy pup for no apparent reason. Seeing the senseless act of animal cruelty, our fisher dwarf, being the chad that he is and defender of all cute and helpless critters, proceeds to take the child to the ground and choke the ever-living shit out of her, all while a second dwarven child helps by punching the already throttled child in the head repeatedly. I mean, damn, Dwarf Fortress, you scary as fuck. Well, time to get started digging those graves. After witnessing a horrible homicide or vigilante justice, take your pick. We continued on with improving the fort by building a large space with individual bedrooms. However, we'd soon be interrupted by yet another tragedy. One of the dwarves wound up dead in a shallow pool of water. Whether he was pushed or simply fell in, it was unknown, but I had an idea of when all of a sudden a giant hawk appeared over our tower. It appeared to have killed two other dwarves and one of our reindeer. The rest of the animals scattered to the far sides of the map, while the tombs below the fort became full of slain dwarves. I assembled a small ragtag group of dwarves to defend the fortress, and they successfully took out one of the giant hawks. But then, two others appeared in the sky and continued to harass our citizens like a construction worker harassing a fine-looking twink boy. Yeah, baby! I want a piece of that! You suck! One by one, dwarves were objectified and lost their lives at the hands of these off-brand Lord of the Rings eagles until our population dwindled down to just ten dwarves. In the end, I didn't even have the heart to surrender to the fort. The hawks had broken me, and the fort remains frozen in time to this day. I guess the moral of the story is, you can take the man out of Detroit, but Detroit can take whatever it wants.